for those of you who don't know, Ian Gibson passed away. And, um, you know, for me, um, it, you know, the news came out at 11th. Um, I'm not sure if that's the exact day that he passed away. But here's the thing. Ian Gibson and I, <laughs> Zah and I go way back, right? So this is, this is Robo Hunter. Whoops. Right? This is the first thing that comes to mind when I think about um, Ian Gibson. Of course, he's done on worked on so many other books, but uh, you can see his. All right, let me just. There you go. That's his name there, right? Art robot, right? And um, his artwork was magic for me. Ian Gibson, you know, um, Robo Hunter was one of my favorite characters. You know, uh, it's something that I haven't read for a while. Right, that's him there with the hat, you know. It's just it's such a for me, Ian uh, Gibson was such a amazing artist and such an influence, right? Uh, you know, for 2008, I just um, you know, I I grew up on this because that was my sort of like my first introduction to non. Garfield, I'm non Tintin and Asterix comic books, right? Or Goofy, right? Which is my first introduction to comic books, so it's Goofy and stuff. And Tintin's and Asterix. But my neighbor across the street was, um, you know, um, was a huge 2000 AD fan. He used to get them weekly, you know, um, and and we, you know, we'd have our own, um, our own little club, right? uh abc warriors from the you know from the comic book there of the same title abc warriors now let's talk a bit about ian gibson right who was he let me just take a break here for a drink right 1946 to 1923 right everybody um he said this is a rebellion from 2008 um ad they're the guys who published rebel um 2000 AD and all the imprints that owned the license to, you know, 2018 and stuff. A renowned, everyone in rebellion is deeply saddened to hear of the death of artist Ian Gibson. So he was 80 to 73. Man. A renowned writer and artist with a career spending half a century. That's 50 friggin' years, guys. 50 years writing comics and and art drawing you know illustrating 50 years half a century right a renowned artist um, writer and artist with a uh, with a career spanning half a century he was responsible for the art of some of 2080s most distinctive and iconic stories including the ballad of halo jones i love halo jones halo jones with, uh, with Alan Moore, I read every single issue, and of course, Robo Hunter with Ma John John Wagner and Alan Grant. But of course, uh, they forgot to mention there was Glover. I think that's the creation of that. But um, you know, people have created that. But uh, T. B. Grover, Grover, T. B. Grover, right? Was also writing on that one. Whether under his pen names and Berto and Q. Twerk, or his own. Gibson's art is immediately recognizable as at ease as at ease in portraying dynamic action. Let me just bring them up a bit. I'm having trouble seeing some of this stuff. Right. Here we go. Right. As at ease in portraying dynamic action as it is chronicle character. As it is chronicle chronicling character as comfortable with goofball comedy as with moving pathos. His, his endless inventive imagination could craft whole worlds that seemed lived in and real yet fantastic and wondrous from the mean streets of Mega City 1 and the robot world of Verdos to the planets on Halo Jones' galaxy-spanning journey. Now, you know, when I, uh, you know, when I talk about uh, you know my work on robot, uh, robot, robot nations and stuff like that. Nation 
and what I'm trying to do with that, I'm just trying to robot centric um, uh, story, stories with AI with robots and, um, you know, all that stuff, right? Sci fi, uh, futuristic, uh, future centric stories, right? This is where my inspiration for that comes from, right? For, from writers like, uh, and artists like Ian Gibson and John Wagner, right? All these amazing people. And so um, I find, you know, for me, I um, it's a loss, right? It's a great loss to the comic industry. But but to think of it, half a century of his life, he gave so much to all of us, right? Out here in the colonies, right, as we like to say, you know, uh, British colonies, where we were able to live through these stories into the future, uh, amazing worlds of Halo Jones, of uh, of Robo Hunter, you know, all these amazing stuff, and just being able to, you know, do this stuff. I mean, I talk about Robo Hunter. I've got a story coming up, which is uh, uh, the Trenton uh, uh, Trenton um, Robot Collection Agency. Right? It's one of those those stories, you know, um, that's upcoming in the future. Uh, you know, Robot Nation book. Um, the whole, you know, as a, as a writer, as a as a as a reader, as a fan, when you have people who dedicate their lives to this art form, and it is an art form, it is in skill, it is amazing to see all their body of work through those fifty years. It's you know, it's inspiration to someone like me, new to the scene. You know, uh, even though I've been trying, you know, I've been working at this since like 2007, right? But, you know, finally being able to be matched up with amazing artists to do, you know, put out great comic books like Robot Nation, right? Ourselves. Um, but it is, it is also sad to lose someone of such amazing talent. But nothing lasts forever, you know? Um, and... There's a sad part of, you know, having lost someone with this much talent. I mean, seriously, you know, this is Halo Jones, you know. It's uh, just, you know, you can see his art style straight away, right? That's Ian Gibson because of the way that Halo here looks, her lips, her hair, her curvature, her face, right, her chin. You look at the costume underneath, you can straight away tell this is one of Gibson's, right? You can see here, right? You can see here, um, sorry, right? Where she, you can see the look of the way she, her hairline, the way the, uh, yeah, the, the arrow, um, the, the arrow, sorry, the, um, how was it? you know, the motion, the motion lines of the hair, whatever they call it. I, I'm not really good at describing stuff like this, right? But, just amazing, you know, the art style. You can really tell it's Ian straight away, right? Because even the clothing, the way he does the clothing looks, you know, has a particular look for him, right? And here you've got something that's totally different, you know? It looks so different, and he's totally changed. It looks a bit more rugged, you know, and um, it's quite different to... You know, this goes. This this has to be one of the older ones, right? But as an as a robot artist, you know, he and in these are fantastical worlds. He's so he was so good at it, and this is why I love working with uh, with Francisco Conti, right? This is why I love working with someone like Francisco on the books that we do, right? When you look at um, when you look at um, where are we here? Let me make sure I've got the right thing. Right. When you look at what, what we're doing with Robot Nation here, right, you know, it's it's kind of similar in the world building that I'm trying to, not trying to copy or anything like that. I'm creating my own stories, creating my own world with, with Francisco Conti, right? Uh, I'm, you know, Every time I, I get a piece of work from him, I think, what else can I do that's going to push him even further to create greater, 
greater artwork, right? You know, I, I, I kind of like, uh, I'm always thrilled from, from any of my artists when I see art come in. Now, the thing about this book is that we're doing short stories, which is quite different because every time, it's not like a world building like we do with Incredicle, it's an entire world, and it's just one story line with different characters and so on, but it's then the world, right, the plunging of it. However, when you're doing something like anthology, which is quite similar to what this is, right, with what 2008 is, that you're, you're basically, you know, doing a whole bunch of short stories or like, uh, like ongoing stories where you're putting in like, like the one we're doing with Ruth, with her story of Fang and Fur, is that we've got 20 pages in one story, uh, one issue, and then we've got 20 pages in another story issue, but then we're going to put 10 pages of eight pages of short story complete and issue number two, and the same thing will happen issue number three, but we're dividing across there. Because we want to, like, we want to be able to, at the end of it all, collect these stories, maybe one day when we finish the, you know, so many issues, we can collect it into one story. But here's the thing about doing anthologies like, uh, like 2000 AD, like our own comic book, Robot Nation, is that you're able to create new worlds every single story. And to do that, you have to have a very talented, very skilled artist. Uh, you also got to be very, you know, tough on yourself. You know, you got to be really tough in what you're trying to tell to create new things, right? You know, last one we did, we did it like a, on a planet and we did it on Earth. Now we're doing it on a spaceship and on Earth. Right, so we're doing backstories on Earth, but well, the current stories on you know the current timeline is on in a spaceship, a giant spaceship with two hundred thousand plus people on them, right? So it's very um, for me, uh, you know, I am trying to create new worlds through Robot Nation with Francisco, and with our cover artist, right, with our colorist, you know, Hugo uh, Hugo Aquino, right? So. I'll leave you with that, right? Because I'm like I'm saying, we're gonna miss Ian Gibson, but you know there are amazing artists out here in the indie scene that are doing working just as hard to tell good stories, just as hard as anybody out there. And we deserve a look. You know, we deserve, you know, your uh, your backing. We deserve your finances, your purchasing of our books. So please. Give us a chance out here for Robot Nation number one. It's only two ninety nine, right? I mean, seriously, it's only two ninety nine US.